Hello, everyone. Uh, we are excited to be here at KubeCon EU, and we're going to tell you about SIG runtime and some of the work that we've been doing, and a little bit about what it looks like uh, in terms of cloud native runtimes in the future. So our charter. So the CNCF SIG runtime is there to help uh, enable the adoption of the and execution of uh, all the different types of workload types that you can run in cloud native environments. So that could be latency sensitive, it could be batch type of workloads and any, any type of specialized uh, workload. We also have three TOC liaisons, uh, CNCF TOC. Uh, currently we have three co-chairs, um, one of the co-chairs, uh, and then we also have a tech lead. We meet every first and third Thursday of each month. Uh, and we also have an email list for communications and as well as a Slack channel for, uh, you know, chatting and asking questions and getting involved. So what do we do? So we have uh, three different types of activities. We have, uh, you know, outreach type of activities. We have supporting type of activities. Uh, we also have education type of activities. In the case of outreach, uh, we try to reach out to new tech projects and people working in newer technologies in the cloud native ecosystem to see what's out there and to see what the trends are and just to advance the field and make sure that uh, we, we, we have something uh, coming in the pipeline. So as, as far as that, you know, how to, people are going to be running some of these workloads in the future. We also support um, different community members and different projects, navigate the CNCF uh, ecosystem. Sometimes it can be a little bit uh, daunting with all the different projects. We help um, the existing projects uh, through the process in the CNCF uh, to go through the different stages of uh, sandbox incubation and graduation. Uh, we also interact with other SIGs and, and other uh, people related to, to the CNCF. And finally, we do some uh, education. So we, we help the, the community understand some of these projects and where do they fit into the whole ecosystem. Uh, all of this um, in the hope that uh, getting more contributors and, and, and getting more involvement from the community. So in the scope, scope of the SIG, we, we have many different projects in different areas. Uh, so here are some of the logos of some of the projects that I have presented. Some of them have actually uh, applied for different stages in the CNCF. Some of them are in graduated state, for example, Container D and Cryo are in Kubernetes is, is the, the main project that started the CNCF. Uh, there are some more projects in, at the edge, uh, like Cube Edge or Open Yurt and other projects that allow you to run uh, WebAssembly uh, on your system. So um, a lot of different areas. So more details about the scope here. So we, in different areas, so we have the general workload orchestration with Kubernetes and Volcano and MetalCube.io. Uh, we also have the specific runtimes like the WebAssembly runtimes, the container regi image registries, uh, the runtime shims like container ID and cryo. Uh, another scope in, in the SIG is the special purpose operating systems. Some example of, of that is uh, flat car is a uh, operating system just meant for running containers. Also, we look at the machine learning ops and edge and AI type of uh, projects like uh, Cube Edge. Kubeflow, uh, MLflow, uh, so some of those projects that allow you to run at the edge and, and run your end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline. And finally, we also um, uh, take care of work groups. So, so under the fall under the six, right now we only have one work group, work group, but uh, we are hoping to get some more in the future. So uh, right now we'll talk about the container orchestrated device work group that we currently have. So in the runtime scope, uh, so some of the projects that presented, so we had this project, uh, Sysbox, uh, and this project uh, allows you to run uh, containers, but the uh, containers look like VMs. So in the container, you will have something like systemd, or you can run like 
uh, Kubernetes or even Docker inside that container. Uh, so the idea um, here is that you are not running VMs that can be kind of heavy. Uh, so in, in this case, you're just running containers that are you're, they're generally faster and more efficient, and they can also be more portable uh, for you know when you want to publish, say, your containers image in a container registry. So another project that uh, got involved in our uh, SIG and had a presentation is SSVM, and this is a WebAssembly runtime. Uh, so WebAssembly uh, or the community created this standard called WASI that allows you to run WebAssembly on a system. As initially, WebAssembly was intended more for the browser, but with this standard, you can run it as a executable as a as a runtime so so many different types of applications have actually come up and as possibilities some of these are pretty early but you know there's different types that, that are possible for example embedding web assembly modules in SaaS applications uh, obviously sandbox uh, maybe running these modules at the edge uh, maybe uh, having applications with IoT where you can run them in like uh, small devices, uh, also some blockchain uh, smart contracts, so managing these in, in WebAssembly modules. So lots of different applications in, in this uh, project aims to target uh, all of them or some of them. Crossless is another uh, project that presented, and this is also in the WebAssembly space. And they allow you to run WebAssembly on top of Kubernetes. So you can create your WebAssembly module, compile it, uh, create your WASM file, and you can push it over to a container registry. And, and with this um, uh, project, like when you have all the components installed on the, your Kubernetes cluster, you can actually instantiate a pod with uh, WebAssembly modules, so it should run like a regular workload just like you would run a container. This is a very early project, but um, a lot of exciting things coming up in, in this space. Trial is another project in, involved in, in our presentations, and uh, this is a container image registry, and we also have some other container image registries in this uh, CNCF, and some of them in the community like Quay. In the CNCF, we have Harbor. But uh, some of the differences with this project is that they aim to be more of a lighter weight uh, image registry that can be run all the time on top of Kubernetes and maybe possibly in the future allowing users to distribute this uh, container images across all your nodes of your Kubernetes clusters in, in, in a faster way and maybe possibly using uh, some protocol like a P2P type of mechanism. And this project is also written in Rust. Uh, it's part of the reason why they are aiming to be lighter weight and, and, and faster. So Rootless community also presented and got involved in R6. So this is um, a mechanism that allows you to use this user namespace facility in the Linux kernel where you can run uh, container type of mechanisms as root inside a, a, a root uh, namespace, but on the host, you will be a different user. So hence you're calling it, uh, or they're calling it rootless containers because, um, you know, on the host, you, you might be user 1000, but inside that user namespace, you might be root. And then as root, uh, you can actually instantiate um, different containers uh, in, there are some limitations uh, as, as far as handling the networking and the file system, but the community is also working on addressing some of those and they're, they're working to, to, to tackle some of those challenges. But um, another space to watch out for and, and, and we'll see more of this in the future. So in another scope of the SIG, we have the special purpose operating systems. Uh, Broadtail is another project uh, we got a chance to see. Uh, and they allow you to run these very lightweight VMs that have a very lightweight operating system. 
So essentially you can define your operating system in what they call an uh, init file, like a vinit file, and you can tell it exactly what to do inside that VM. And no need to have daemons like SSH daemon, a shell or a login. So something very lightweight and, and um, the idea here is that it's more protected and it's also lighter weight so that it becomes uh, more efficient and faster. So very interesting project and we'll see more of the, uh, this project in the future as well. So also on this scope of edge AI and MLOps, uh, so Kubeflow presented uh, uh, and this project might be familiar to many people and it's basically end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning on top of Kubernetes. So in essence, you can use some of these machine learning tools like Jupyter, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow to build your models, to train them. And with Kubeflow, you can take it all the way to production. And it allows you to create all the, the full pipeline uh, that takes it from you know, uh, training and to tweaking and all the way to uh, serving it in, in some uh, service, Kubernetes service, uh, whether you want to run it on the cloud or so, or wherever you want to run it. Open Yurts is another project uh, in the CNCF. They're currently in Sandbox, and this project is similar to Cube Edge, and it has a, a main controller plane that runs in the cloud, and then it has components that run at the edge. So essentially they're allowing you to manage your workloads uh, at the edge. Uh, so for specifically running these type of workloads that have become, they have become very popular now, especially with uh, 5G. Some other projects presented in the past, uh, and if you're interested about them, uh, you can reach out to us or you can reach out to their communities. Uh, they'd be happy uh, for you to get involved. And we're also doing some outreach and some upcoming activities. There's been a lot of buzz on WebAssembly runtime. So we reached out to some, some of them. There's uh, some of them under the Bytecode Alliance and uh, some projects like Wasmer, which is a WebAssembly runtime. Then you have something like uh, Wasm3, which is in a WebAssembly interpreter. Uh, we also have uh, projects that are currently in the CNCF and we want to get more involvement from them like K3S and any future project or technology. Um, for example, if you know something about quantum computing or something that might be interesting, also, also open to it. And I will hand it off now to Renault and he'll talk about the container orchestrated device work group. Hello everyone, my name is Renaud Gobert. I am a software engineer at NVIDIA. I've been working for the past four years on the cloud -based tools. Today I'll be presenting to you the Container Orchestrated Device Workgroup, or COD Workgroup. Um, to give you a brief overview of our group, um, we are a small group of device vendors, container and time maintainers, and contributors, as well as Kubernetes SIG members. And over the past five years, we've seen an exponential growth of people making use of devices. In the AI field, for example, with uh, machine learning and deep learning um, to do network data plane acceleration or even to do encryption and decryption acceleration. Uh, devices such as FPGAs, GPUs, NICs, or even custom ASICs have become actually pretty ubiquitous in the data center. And so the goal of this group is really to improve the device support in the cloud devices. What that means is that you as a user or as a cluster admin, we are trying to make your experience seamless. We don't want you to switch into your nose to install custom runtimes, custom um, drivers, or even kind of tinker with your um, distributions uh, and trails. Being vendors, users, and cluster administrators in clusters that have these devices, we are familiar with the problems and we've laid out a roadmap to, try to, to show what are the main issues that we've been facing. Um, the first one really is at the runtime level. Uh, it's about exposing a device to a container. It's actually a really hard problem because the space is actually very fragmented. Kubernetes has a concept of device plugin, 
while Nomad has its own concept of the OS plugin. Docker has a concept of entry uh, plugin mechanism, while Podman has a concept of hooks, and Nomad has its own concept of hooks. If you look at the different runtimes out there, it's actually pretty much the same. Everyone has implemented their own mechanism. And all these differences across the space makes it very difficult for vendors to provide a uniform experience and actually the same set of features across the different projects, meaning that some projects have actually different features than others. But that makes the support burden actually pretty high. Um, on the node level, um, when you are actually using a, uh, an external device, your main kind of observation or goal here is to um, perform a computation that is quite slow on a CPU on that device. And typically, if you don't choose the right uh, memory, CPU, device, or NIC, you might actually end up taking a very slow path when, for example, transferring data from your uh, CPU's memory to your device, which ends up actually nullifying um, the benefits of using that device. And so choosing the right device is actually really important. And we've been doing a lot of work on the Kubernetes level through the CPU manager, the topology manager. Um, finally, when you are at a cluster level, when your application actually needs to use uh, multiple nodes, uh, whether you are in a small or big, large scale deep learning application, uh, or you are a supercomputer, you typically need to make sure that your nodes are actually kind of close to each other so that when they start, when your applications start talking to each other, talk, talking through the network to each other, um, you're not incurring a really heavy penalty. So finding out the actual uh, right um, um, policies, extension points, and just general knobs for you to um, indicate to your orchestrator which um, node is actually closer to the other is a really important difficult but challenging problem. Um, and so one of, the pro one of the solutions or one of the uh, kind of uh, projects that I'm going to talk to you about today is focused on the runtime. It's called CDI, the Container Device Interface, and it's a unified plugin architecture for runtimes. Three things you need to know about it. It's based on the CNI model, the Container Networking Interface. It describes the devices that are available on the machine and describes the operations that runtime is performed. Here on this slide, you can see a very simple example where a vendor has created uh, a JSON file at Etsy CDI vendor.json um, that describes that there is a um, device that is vendor.com slash device on the node. It has um, a device type, sorry, on the node. It has a single device on the node that's called my device where the only operations that a runtime must perform is to mount the dev card one and dev card render one into the container. Um, this is um, the space of a vendor. As a user, you'll be actually more interacting with your container runtime. It's actually not that different from a normal um, experience. Um, you just invoke your runtime with the flags dash dash device, my device, uh, or vendor.com slash device equals my device. And you just invoke your image and your command in there. Uh, from a Kubernetes perspective, uh, we've actually kind of um, created this proof of concept that shows what we're intending to do. Uh, it's based on the same model as volumes that you can see in Kubernetes. And the general idea is that when you, as a cluster administrator, provision machines that have physical devices on them, you're also going to tell Kubernetes um, that you have a what we call device class. A device class is just a representation of that device, typically with uh, the model information, um, for example, the PCI ID, so that Kubernetes can identify which devices on which node match that device class. So for example, think GPUs and ASICs. As a user, you are going to submit to Kubernetes a device claim that claims a set of devices, for example, three GPUs or half a GPU. Um, and Kubernetes will internally match that claim to an actual device or set of devices. Um, finally, as a user, you'll be submitting a pod that makes a reference to that device claim. Uh, from there on, your pod will get scheduled on a node and you'll be able to see that device inside the container. Um, we've also created a roadmap for CDI. Um, 
by the time you see this presentation, we'll probably be in public availability uh, with a first uh, feature in Podman or a first implementation being available in Podman. Um, we've been working with different runtimes, for example, ContainerD, Podman, and different groups, for example, the HPC Advisory Council, on how this um, solution, how this specification should look like. We've been showing some talks. Finally, you can actually show, see the formal spec uh, on our GitHub. Um, you, we've also been working on a Kubernetes cap, and you've seen in the previous slide what this would kind of look like. Um, we are also working towards having um, the first version available. Um, the a set of um, things that we have defined are having support at least two major runtimes. It seems to be Kubernetes, uh, Podman and ContainerD that are going to be uh, supporting CDI. Um, having a better level in Kubernetes and making sure that we are working to have at least three different plugins. From there, we'll be tagging a version of v1.0 so that users understand that their plugins will actually be supported over time and we can actually lay out the groundwork for an ecosystem to build on top of this. Um, COD is a new actually uh, exciting and very new group. Um, if you want to contribute, if you have ideas, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, feel free to drop into our Tuesdays uh, bi-weekly meetings. Uh, and if you're working with our specifications, with our projects, let us know, either by dropping a meeting or even sending an email to SIG Runtime. We'd love to hear from you. And that's it for the SIG Runtime presentation. Um, you can read a lot more on what we're doing for SIG Runtime or COD on the cncf.io mailing list. You can reach out to us on SIG Runtime on the Slack CNCF. Um, and you can also look up um, some of the meeting information on our GitHub. Feel free to also join the SIG Runtime meetings that are bi-weekly on Thursday and give us some feedback. Thanks for attending.